we will calculate the electric field due to a uniformly charged disk with the charge Q and radius R at the distance x. We begin by considering a thin ring with a radius little r and charge GQ. It will create an electric field GE along the axis of the disk with the magnitude equal to K GQ x over r squared plus x squared to the power of 3 halves. Here we have used the result that we obtained for the electric field due to a uniformly charged ring with a charge, in this case GQ, and a radius little r. Before we can perform the integration, we need to find a relationship between GQ and r as both the variables but not independent of each other. We introduce the surface charge density sigma as the charge per unit area, or GQ over dA, and for a uniformly charged disk, the surface charge density sigma will also be equal to the total amount of charge Q over the total area of the disk. Now, the ring is not really infinitely thin. It has some finite thickness, which we're going to consider to be dr. In other words, the inner radius of the ring will be r and the other the outer radius of the ring will be r plus dr. In such case, we can see that the area of such thick ring is really the difference between the area of two circles, one with the radius of r plus dr and the other one with the radius of r. And so we can write that the area of the ring dA is equal to 2 pi r dr, where r is the inner radius of that ring. The charge residing on that ring then will be equal to the surface charge density sigma times the area of that ring dA. And if we replace sigma with the value of the total charge over the total area, we get for the charge residing on the ring to be equal to the total charge of the disk over pi big R squared times 2 pi little r dr. Here the big R is the radius of the disk and the little r is the radius of the ring. With that expression we can go back to the electric field due to a uniformly charged ring and write that that field must be equal to k times big Q over pi big R squared times 2 pi little r dr times x over little r squared plus x squared to the power of 3 halves here we have replaced the GQ with the value that we calculated. The electric field then can be written simply as KQX over the radius of the disk squared times 2 times the radius of the ring dr over little r squared plus x squared to the power of 3 halves. The electric field of the disk then will be equal to kqx over the radius of the disk squared integral over 2 times the radius of the ring little r dr over little r squared plus x squared to the power of 3 halves with limits of 0 to big R. The smallest ring is the one with infinitely small radius little r equal to zero and the largest ring being the ring with radius equal to the radius of the disk. Before we can perform the integration we switch variables. We introduce a new variable w equal to the little r squared plus x squared. We can easily see that in that case 2r dr is simply dw and the limits for the new variable. When little r is equal to 0, the new variable w must be equal to x squared. When the radius of the ring is equal to the radius of the disk, then the new variable w must be equal to the radius of the disk, big R squared, plus x squared. With the new variable, the integral for the electric field due to the, due to the disk becomes k, the charge of the disk x over the radius of the disk squared integral over dw over w to the power of 3 halves with limits from x squared to r squared plus x squared. 
the integral is simply equal to minus 2 over w to the power of 1 half and so we can write for the electric field of the disk to be equal to k qx over r squared minus 2 over w to the power of 1 half with limits from x squared to big R squared plus x squared. Evaluating at the limits, the electric field then must be equal to minus 2kq over the big R squared times x over square root of R squared plus x squared minus x over square root of x squared. That last expression can be simplified somewhat if we consider that x cannot be negative in, it, in value. Um, we do have freedom to choose our direction and so we can always make sure that we have chosen our x-axis so that x is not negative. In that case the second term in, in the parenthesis will cancel to a value of 1 so we're going to have x over square root of x. And so we can write the finally for the electric field of the disk 2kq over the radius of the disk squared times in parenthesis 1 minus x over square root of the radius of the disk squared plus x squared. And that is the result for the electric field due to a uniformly charged disk with the charge q and radius r.